A couple of years ago, I made a video and also did a write-up on building a tracking generator from the HP 8560-6B Spectrum Analyzer. And the method I used there was to use a mixer uh, to mix the first audio output from the Spectrum Analyzer and uh, subtract the IF from the LO and use the output of the mixer to drive the device under test and uh, feed the signal into the Spectrum Analyzer itself. For those who have not seen the video or read my blog post, I will leave a couple of links in the description below. And I'd encourage you to take a look to learn more details. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can have your PCB designs professionally made. Being the largest PCB prototyping manufacturer in Shenzhen, China, JLC PCB offers affordable PCB services for making two-layer boards all the way up to six layers with their modern tooling. Please check out their website using the link provided in the description below and consider trying them out with your next electronics project. So here's a diagram of the arrangement of what I did previously. And uh, as you can see, the key to this tracking generator is the ability to obtain this stable reference frequency of the first IF of the 8566B. And in this case, it's a 3.6214 GHz signal. In its 0 to 2.5 GHz baseband, for example, the first LO of the 8566B goes from 3.6 2.4 GHz all the way up to 6.1 or 6.2 GHz depending on whether or not the band is locked. But regardless, if we subtract that uh, 3.6214 GHz signal from the uh, first LO output, we get a 0 to 2.5 GHz tracking signal that is locked to the LO during the sweep. To generate that 3.6214 GHz signal, I used the HP 8642B frequency synthesizer to generate a 1.8107 GHz signal and then frequency doubled it to the desired IF using a mini circuit um, ZX90 2 19 frequency multiplier like the one I have here. Now, and of course, this is not ideal as a frequency doubler adds in conversion loss, and in this case, it's a 10.5, uh, up to 10.5 decibel. Uh, but also, the, uh, the frequency loss, uh, the conversion loss, rather, is a function of the frequency, which in turn causes unevenness in the uh, frequency response. And it also introduces unnecessary harmonic distortions as well, as you can see in the various graphs here. So ideally, if you have a signal source that can output a stable 3.6214 GHz signal, you don't want to use that instead of uh, using this frequency doubling approach. And that's what we are going to take a look today. And now let's take a look at the setup we have here. And uh, the first LO output from the spectrum analyzer goes through this coax signal and comes into this RF uh, isolator. And the reason I have a RF isolator here is to prevent the LO from feeding back into the LO output, which can interfere, uh, cause some interference and uh, degrade the signal. Now, in my experiment that uh, I did a couple of years ago, and I did uh, do one with and without this isolator, and the results are uh, pretty comparable, but uh, nevertheless, you can see some improvement with the uh, isolator in place. So I leave it here. And after the signal goes through the isolator, it goes into the LO port of this mixture. And uh, when it comes out here, the IF port goes back into the spectral analyzer. Now, this is where you're going to be connecting your device under test. Right now, this is just configured as a through um, output so that we can use that to calibrate when uh, we power it down first. And the RF into the mixture comes from the 8671A uh, microwave synthesizer that I had there. And uh, I did a, a teardown on that a couple of uh, weeks ago, or maybe a month ago. And you can take a look if you are interested in that. But, uh, so that's where we obtain our 3.6214 gigahertz signal coming in here. And I did put a, a three decibel pad here so that 
again, this is to prevent it from going back, the signal. And also, the output is a little bit strong, so I uh, attenuated it, it a little bit. And uh, the clock of uh, this 8566B spectral analyzer and that 8671A synthesizer are actually locked. So I use a cable to take the output from this uh, spectral analyzer and feed it directly into the 10 MHz reference clock input of the 8671A. So they are uh, perfectly in sync. Okay, so now let's uh, turn on the 8566B spectral analyzer. And uh, let me just uh, to show you the uh, spectral analyzer. And now with that turned on, we're going to proceed uh, with turning on our uh, 8671 synthesizer. So I'm going to show you up here. Turn it on. And as you can see right now, we are already at uh, 3.6214 gigahertz. That's because last time when I powered it down, before that, I set it to that frequency already. And uh, that 8671 has an internal uh, battery to save whatever the setting you had last, which is kind of nice. But now, if you look carefully, we have the uh, uh, output set to off so that uh, uh, we will turn it on as soon as we adjust our special analyzer here. So let me change the view back to the special analyzer. And uh, right now, what you are seeing is uh, basically from its basic 2 to uh, 22 gigahertz band. So we want to change that back to 2 to 2.5 gigahertz band. And uh, so now watch what happens when I turn on the, uh, the RF signal here. So as soon as I turn on the RF signal, as you can see, we got a re relatively uh, flat line, which is actually very good. This is to keep in mind without any calibration uh, yet. So for a modern spectral analyzer, you have a single button that you can press to basically make this output straight, a calibrated line. But for us, we have to use a trace arithmetic to do that. So let me see uh, if we still remember how to do that. And uh, to do that, I'm going to display line. So I'm going to do display line here. And I'm going to adjust it so that it's a, let's uh, put it a number as a minus 10 dBm which is uh, relatively nice. And uh, the first thing I want to do is that we want to swap the two traces because all the arithmetic here, if you see here, is uh, done to trace B. But right now we're displaying trace A. So now let's uh, swap the A and B. So temporarily you're going to not see that B because right now I'm not showing uh, the trace B yet. So the next thing I want to do is that we want to subtract that uh, uh, line from B and save the residual back to B. Okay, so now you can see at the bottom, that's the residual uh, from B. And the reason we do this is because, if you recall, the A is basically exactly the same signal as this one, except it's with that uh, residual here. So if we subtract the A uh, from whatever this trace is, then we're gonna get a clean uh, flat signal. So let's uh, do that, and uh, we wanna do A minus B, and we store it back to A. Okay, so now we wanted to um, do clear right A, and now you can see that A is flat. So now we're gonna blank out B. So we have our signal here, and that is displaying from uh, zero to 2.5 gigahertz. So unfortunately, if we if we need to switch uh, to different frequency band, we will also need to change that uh, calibration signal as it will not be flat anymore. So the first thing we want to do is let's uh, take a look at a filter. And uh, this filter is the same, pretty much the same filter as I did experiment with last time. It basically is just a, uh, a coil uh, in parallel with a 10 picofarad uh, per, uh, capacitor. And so the resonant frequency is roughly somewhere between 300 and 400 uh, uh, gigahertz, uh, sorry, not gigahertz, megahertz. So we'll see exactly what the resonant frequency is. And for that, let's uh, take a look here. Let me uh, swap back a little bit. So we wanted to disconnect our through here and uh, put in our 
device under test, which is this filter. So as soon as we uh, connect it, you will see that now we have a nice notch there. And uh, if we want to measure what that notch is, we can take a look to see. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if you saw this, but all of a sudden we started getting another tone uh, here. That's because the YTO uh, became unlocked. And this is actually a problem I noticed for a while that I haven't been able to attend to it. And apparently it's quite common among the old 80, uh, 566Bs and uh, there are a lot of people uh, claiming that it's uh, either due to a dirty potentiometer or something that uh, to the nature of a, a capacitor in the YTO loop but anyway when I get a chance I will have to investigate that but right now this is uh, what we've got here. Okay, let's see if we can change the uh, frequency range to, to see if we can capture that tone. Let's do the start frequency let's say uh, 300 megahertz and uh, start stop frequency let's do one gigahertz yeah so as you can see we have we still have this uh, weird tone and this clearly is not locked and uh, right now this one is sitting at about let's do a center frequency right now 650 uh, megahertz so it's clearly way off from the uh, the 300 also megahertz that we were expecting and unfortunately, uh, that's as far as I can go today uh, without having to dealing with this uh, 8566B. Had it lasted for uh, just five more minutes, I would have been able to finish this video uh, showing you guys all I wanted to show. But uh, unfortunately, Murphy's Law always apply, and that's just how things go. And uh, so anyway, so here is the again the setup of this uh, tracking generator. And uh, I will definitely make a video if I get a chance to uh, fix that 8566B. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned something new. And uh, sorry that uh, I couldn't uh, get this thing to work at the last minute. But uh, uh, you got the, the sense. And also, if you can check, in, check my uh, previous video, you will see exactly how everything works here. And uh, again, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up and uh, try uh, subscribe and I will catch up with you next time.